Hello everyone and welcome. Now today we are looking at an IQ Smart 3 motherboard with a firewire connection issue. The customer reported that the cable was plugged in the wrong way around into one of the ports of the scanner. Surprisingly, this is a common issue with many older firewire devices. Another one is plugging old worn cables at extreme angles. When this happens, it often shorts the input on the transceiver chip TSB41AB3 or even the actual controller chip. Reason is a late ground event and that is basically when voltage is applied before the ground connection is established between both devices, the computer and the actual scanner. Fortunately, the scanner has two firewire ports and the second one is still in working condition. However, the customer wants to sell the scanner in immaculate condition, so we sent the board in for repair and further inspection. Some measurements made clear the transceiver chip is the root cause for our issue, so I took the board out to desolder the chip. And as you can see here, it's not a big thing to remove the chip. You just need a bit of hot air, some flux, a bit of solder paste to um, lower the melting point of the factory solder. And then you can remove the chip with low heat. Now, this is our donor board. It's an old Firewire PCI card I bought on eBay. Um, this allows me to test the chip before soldering it onto the scanner board by simply plugging it into a PC. Um, because I've had bad experience ordering these vintage chips online, getting scammed by sellers with fake parts and everything. So now I prefer buying old PCI cards with the components I need. And um, that way I can be sure I'm getting original quality and it's often no more expensive than ordering from questionable sources online. And sometimes I can even pick them up locally and this saves me a lot of weight. So here we have it. This is our Donna chip and um, I'm just cleaning it off a little bit. You can see there is excess solder and that is because I'm using a um, special solder paste um, with a very low melting point at around 140 degrees. Um, and what it does is it reduces the melting point of the factory solder, which makes it much easier to remove the chip from the board and you don't need excess heat. Here you can see similar solder paste again. This is actually with a bit higher melting point, like 180 degrees. I use that for soldering components onto the board to have a bit of leeway in terms of temperature delta between the actual component and the board because we don't want to um, we don't want the part to desolder itself while um, actually in use and getting hot and everything. So you you may notice me knocking um, the chip around a bit too much here. That is because I am not used to record my microscopic work on video. Um, because I'm, I'm having one eye on, on the monitor while the other eye is through the microscope because I want to keep um, the recording uh, in focus and uh, the actual component in the center. Um, and this is something that totally throws me off when working. <laughs> I'm not used to that. Also, as you can see here, this is a stereoscopic microscope and it gives me some depth information while working. And the monitor will not do that. And that leads to uh, that I don't know 
uh, in which hate my tools are and uh, that again leads to knocking of components okay you can see me um, reflowing um, every single leg on the chip just to be sure every leg has a proper connection and now again cleaning it a little bit again and after that i will use some pliers to wiggle every single leg just to see if it's properly soldered to the board and everything is tight and firm and in place also checking for shorts between the legs but this time everything went absolutely fine there are no issues no shorts or everything and you can see it's um, yeah it's a quite clean work actually i've done here despite my problems managing video and soldering at the same time so this is an hour later in the meantime i inspected the board for any other potential issues focusing especially on cold solder joints and corrosion um, i had to reflow a few joints but not worth recording um, yeah, and after reflowing, um, the board had a bath in my ultrasonic cleaner and another bath in isopropyl alcohol. Um, and then it went on to a heating plate um, to make it ready for testing. And this is now basically um, reassembling everything again. Now, before powering it up, a quick disclaimer at this point. Be mindful of the high voltage in the PSU area. Don't touch it if you're not experienced. This is uh, the kind of lethal stuff your parents warned you about. Just saying. Okay, so what you can see in the video, I'm using a variable transformer mounted under the desk to gradually increase the AC voltage to the PSU. Watching for shorts, um, any signs of smoke and such bad things we don't want to happen. And as you can see, I'm at the same time checking um, the board with a thermal camera um, with a macro lens to um, make sure operation is correct and operating temperatures are within tolerance and everything. Okay, so now I'm checking actual connectivity of both ports to a computer. Um, the Creo scanners are actually designed to work on Mac OS, but for the sake of simple recognition, also a Windows PC will totally do the trick. Um, and I found everything to be working fine. Um, all temperatures fine, connectivity is there, etc. And um, yeah, Basically, this is done and um, you can now watch me taking a video for the actual customer um, describing what I've done, describing the condition of the board and the ports and the thermals and everything he needs to know for the future, talking about um, capacitor replacement and this is actually not needed on this one still some years of um, worry free operation ahead i think this repair was actually straightforward and went very smoothly um, i received the board at 10 a.m and shipped it back by 5 p.m the same day or so um, total cost for the repair including parts labor shipping everything was around 250 euros um, always depends a bit on the nature of the issue and whether the cause is known but this one went without a hitch basically the texas instruments tsb 41 ab3 can be found in many scanners of that time especially minolta nikon uh, Microtech, Creo, or whatever. Um, mind you, this video is not so much of a how-to guide. It's a bit more like building trust for my potential customers. 
So if you want, you can surely try for yourself, but I won't take any responsibility for what you do there. Um, the video does not show everything you need to know and it needs a bit of practice to um, get this right. If you have any issues with your scanner, firewire connectivity or whatever, or you need a service or CLA or something, leave me a message 